Yep. Are you gonna amount to anything? Eleven-year-old Patrick Johnson was timid and shy. He didn't have much self-esteem, and he was constantly apologizing. He'd even apologize when he had to use the bathroom. Then a relative noticed bruises, and it all came together. The telltale signs of child abuse. Before authorities could intervene, Patrick's stepfather, Donald Fletcher, packed the family up and left the state. They moved to Arizona and stayed there just long enough for school nurses to notice the bruises on Patrick and his brothers. Before they could do anything to help the boys, Fletcher packed the family up again and moved. Summer of 1990, the Fletcher's newest home, Sweeney, Texas. The boys are slow. But Daddy, there's fire ants. I better not find one weed left when you're finished. Yes, Daddy. A demanding parent and strict disciplinarian, Fletcher often left work early just to check up on the boys, make sure their daily chores were done to his rigid standards. Hey, Patrick, I want some help. It won't take me any time. Oh, no. I gotta earn my way. Mr. Mrs. Fletcher? Yeah. I'm Patrick's teacher. So nice to meet both of you. Thank you. I want you to know we place the highest emphasis on a child's education. Oh, well, that's really encouraging to hear. You know, when education parents Education is the most important factor in a child's future. But you, you know, Patrick is such a nice boy, so well-behaved. You watch him. Or as a manipulator. He's lazy. Oh, well, beg your pardon. I've never had a problem with him at all. The boy needs more homework. You're too easy on him. Well, I think we give what's That's what's the matter with this country. No challenge, no discipline. Schools are a joke. But... That's why America can't compete. We are raising a crop of intellectual worms here. Well, it was nice meeting both of you. I'm, I'm sure I'll see you again. Mm, sure you will. <clears throat> Fletcher wrote sophisticated computer programs for a medical the software company. Well up to, point, Bert. to his employers, he was a brilliant My engineer. To his stepsons, an unbearable tyrant. You got that, Bert? Yeah. Bert, let me call you back just a minute. Yeah, something's come up. I'll be just a second. What are you doing without your glasses on? Get up here. Get up here! Right you stand up straight when I'm talking to you. I told you to keep those glasses on. What do you think you're trying to do? They hurt me. I want them off. Honey, it's not that big a deal. We have been through this before. Why don't you get in your homework? I'm tired. Patrick, I... I don't get it. Are you committed to failure? Disgust me. All right. You're too tired to get your homework. You're too tired to eat. Go to your room. Go to your room. Police say the punishment didn't stop there. Fletcher continued his brand of discipline by sending Patrick to school with an empty lunchbox. Patrick, what are you having for lunch? Uh, some stuff. What is it? Um, some ravioli and green beans. Messy? Patrick, there's nothing in here. Just don't tell my father. Just pretend like I had something to eat, okay? Don Fletcher is the most gutless coward that I've ever encountered. He wants to prey on people that are smaller than him. I've never encountered an instance in, in the course of our investigation where he ever picked on anybody his own size. To give you an example, he would physically box with the children as a form of punishment. I told you boys 20 times before, no toys in the house. 
You about to learn a simple lesson in life. You stopped it. This is going to be the longest three minutes you of your quit. young lives. I'm going to tell. Shut up. Patrick took upon himself the role of being the protector of everybody else in the family, even if it meant that he was going to die. And I think he knew he was going to die. A trip to the optometrist triggered another headache for Fletcher and another round of abuse for Patrick. You got a two cent brain and you need a hundred dollars worth of glasses. God, my head is killing me. Here, dimwit, see if you can open that. Have you finished your homework? Yes, ma'am. May I see it? This isn't finished. Patrick, you lied to me. Patrick! You ever finish one thing without me busting your head in? I'm tired. I'll do it later. Donald Fletcher was 280 pounds. Patrick was 70 pounds. Are you going to mount to anything? Are you going to dig ditches the rest of your life? Doesn't matter as long as they don't have to look at your ugly face. A very sickening thing about this is that Lucille Fletcher couldn't take care of the laughs. Are you sassing your father? This is the man who premeditatedly, repeatedly abused a child. You're not my father. I wish you would die. You're going to need some discipline, boy. Don't touch me. This 280-pound man started to beat him about the head and face. All Patrick did was try to avoid and survive. He now? hit his head up against the wall, and then he fell to the now? floor. He got up again. Mr. Fletcher hit him again. His brain just hit his skull. Don Fletcher is a socially functioning child murderer, and there was no remorse. Patrick was unconscious and bleeding, but doctors say the Fletchers waited hours before they took him to a hospital. By then, it was too late. As Patrick lay dying, Donald Fletcher gave this chilling statement to police. And he started yelling at me, and I slapped him a couple more times, open-handed. He was still yelling, so I hit him, doubled up my right fist and hit him on the jaw. It seemed to be kind of okay, but then he just kind of faded out. So we got in the car, took him to the hospital. That's pretty much it. On July 5th, Donald Fletcher pleaded guilty to child abuse, and he was sentenced to 55 years in prison. But Fletcher convinced a judge to give him two weeks to put his affairs in order. Donald and Lucille Fletcher used that time to disappear. Fletcher's good with computers and machines, and he picks things up quickly. He learned to speak Spanish while waiting for his trial. He's a large man who needs medication for high blood pressure. While on the run, police say he's come down with a gout, so he may be limping. Recently, the Fletchers were spotted in Albuquerque, New Mexico. He'd grown a beard and was using the alias John Anderson. The couple was driving an old, dark gray Pontiac station wagon. Lucille Fletcher pleaded guilty to failing to protect her son. She was given five years probation. Just a week ago, both Lucille and Donald Fletcher were in the San Antonio, Texas area, but they may have moved on by now. If you've seen them, make that phone call, 1-800-CRIME-91. Lucille Fletcher's other two sons are with their natural father now. We wish them our best. We deal with a lot of disturbing cases here at America's Most Wanted, but this one is especially disturbing to me. I'd like to see the partnership work tonight and bring...